Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. Now I've recently done Typhus on the channel, so it's time to get into his bodyguard of 20 poxwalkers. I've built 10 poxwalkers, exactly as they come from the box. The other 10, I've built the bodies and left the extra parts off, and that's how we're going to do this conversion. So no other kits other than what comes with the poxwalkers. I'm going to mix together some sculpting material and stuff like that. So I'm taking milliput and green stuff, making them up, and then mixing them together. You have good balance between the two. If you don't have both, I would just use green stuff for what we're going to do. Now, I've not done any finished models at the start of the video like I normally do, so if you want to see the finished models, you're going to have to whip right to the end. We'll go through and hopefully I'll talk through my process. Now, you don't have to do exactly what I've done, but what I've started off with is the model here, who's kind of the unit leader, um, not putting his hammer on, taking a different head, and then to replace the arm, just made a little curl of green stuff from the milliput mixed together, taking the head off a totally different pox walker, sliced off the little hand that goes up to it, and then just really tried to make the right-hand side match the left-hand side. So he's got sort of two tentacle arms coming out, and these little tentacles really is a small amount of that mix, twisting it together and sticking it in. No more difficult than that. Then using a sculpting tool, a bit of water on the end, just to make it kind of look a little bit prettier as it's going into uh, the sleeve there. And then with the head, I've mounted the head on by putting a blob of green stuff in there because the original head was quite sunken into the kind of chest area. So I've raised it out of there. Simple conversions, but will make the models look different. And that was really the whole point of this. I just wanted the whole set to look radically different. Now the next model is a much easier conversion because this is now, I've taken the head from this to use on the previous one. So I'm just clippering down the neck area using a bit of a knife to file it down and just gluing a different head on. Where that original hand goes, there's like a little nub you can see there where that extra part we're not using anymore. And I'm just covering that with two little balls of the green stuff and mini put mix to then make it look all kind of pushed, jewelry and nurgly. And that's a great thing about doing this kind of conversion because it's nurgle, because they're meant to be a bit gross and grim. It doesn't really matter if you mess up because you can just cover it either at this stage with a couple of little balls of um, the mini put green stuff mix and make it look pushed, jeweled. Or at the end, if you've still got a mistake in there, you can cover it with um, Nurgle's rot to kind of mess up, you know, cover up any mess ups you do. And I've really worked through this set like this, looking at the next model thinking, hmm, what am I going to do? And then moving on. You can see here with this one, I'm not putting on the entire left shoulder and I'm just making a nice tentacle arm. So taking a long little sausage of the uh, mix, twirling it together to make an interesting kind of uh, pattern around the arm. And then I originally was going to just have it curled up against the body and thought, hang on, he's got a gas mask on that I was going to clip her off but I've done it so that it looks like he's almost holding his gas mask to carry it. So that's it, no real plan as I started, just looking at the models, taking the other parts I had from the other bits and the green stuff, mix, and then putting it on. So into his shoulder there, where obviously the part that was there previously was gonna fill up a lot of it, pushing some of that green stuff in, taking some of it away, and again, sculpting it around to make it look kind of nerdly. Now I was gonna put a ball of uh, the mini put green stuff mix on here, but it was quite sticky still, so it wasn't gonna come off my finger. Now I've got a lot of uh, balls of mini put and green stuff and things that I've made historically. Every time I've got some left, I'll either drop some into a mold or I'll just roll some little balls here. One of the best things you can do for any Nurgle sort of conversion is to make little balls of mini put green stuff, let them harden, and you can use them later on. Now the next model, a really, really simple head swap. So these, some of these conversions are far more simple than others. Some I'm going into a bit more depth. So real simple head swap, chop down the mounting point that that head comes on, give it you know, a pair of clippers with a bit of a hobby knife and then plenty of glue and that will melt both sides of it. And again, merge that head into it. So very, very simple, some of these conversions, some of them a little bit more uh, difficult. And mostly that was geared around whether the model itself had its arms off the body. I did consider with this one chopping off the kind of wrench that it's carrying, but again, I wanted to stick to just what was in the kit. So I left it fairly simple. Now looking at the next model, I decided I wanted to separate out to this kind of two-pronged bug alien kind of uh, arm. And I wanted to go on to the, um, the, the character that looks a bit more like he's in a, some sort of hazmat suit. That meant clippering off the entirety of the right arm. And again, originally I was going to use his right arm and knife on something else. Didn't end up doing that. So that's a spare part for somewhere else. And then the bug arm, getting it onto the side. Now, this next piece, there's two models that come in the Poxwalker kit with quite a large proportion of their torso uh, in one piece. But I thought, right, let's take the clippers to it. Let's hack a, this, uh, this off. And just took a section, really, of the top part of this um, Poxwalker, cut the weapon off give it a trim down and again that's quite a dramatic change so needed a fairly big blob 
of the Milliput and Greenstuff mix to push that torso into. Now, actually, this is the model I think in the end I quite end up liking the most out of all of them. So a little bit of just meshing, messing around, trying to make the torso uh, blend in a little bit. And again, I'm not a sculptor. I'm not fantastic at you know sculpting models, but it's trying to make it look like there was sort of some chest structure and things underneath there. And again, you'll notice when we get to the painting side, put a lot of those little balls of Milliput in there to cover up anywhere I didn't think the sculpting was right. So following on that same theme, we've got the basically the opposing torso. So we've just taken the torso that should be on this piece, on the one you've just watched, and then vice versa. Quite a large chunk of mini put and green stuff. And again, sculpting it in to make it look something resembling, you know, a human torso. And I really recommend having a go at this kind of conversion on pox walkers or something because they're an easier one to have a go at because they're not really meant to look real. Doing the three little uh, twirls there to make the tentacles, you'll see one I've twisted quite heavily to give a bit of texture and striations around it, one a little bit of a twist, and one more of a plain kind of sausage at the end. The only thing I would say is make it thick at one end, thin at the other, use a bit of water to smooth it down to try and get your thumb marks out of it. And again, some pre-made um, little balls of green stuff you can see there, just pushing into the shoulder. You will note if you notice carefully at the end figure, it ends up with a smaller ball of green stuff on the shoulder. I thought this one was too large, so later on before the stuff had all set, I whipped it out. And that's the other thing about this build. This whole thing for these pot quarters took a couple of hours on an evening, and again, it was the same green stuff really put mix that I used for the whole of that um, kind of process, so probably not even a couple of hours, so fairly quick process here. Now, with this next pox walker, all I decided was I wanted bionic arm off. I then took that bionic arm and used him on the model that we've just uh, sacrificed the arms from. So there was the, the bug arm we saw wraps around the whole shoulders of this model before. But cut off that bionic arm, plenty of glue, and then just stuck that bionic arm onto this pox walker model here. Again, leaving it to set for a little bit before we kind of move on to the next bit. And then again, when I was doing this, it was looking around at what weapons were knocking around. This was obviously a spare arm that was existing, and I thought, well, that's not really going to fit. Then looked at the arm we just sacrificed off the um, chunky torso. We took the uh, sort of shoulder and head off and thought, actually, this is the one I'm going to try and do. So then cutting the sort of bulky stomach and body off this model and then getting it glued on. So you can see the thought process as you're going is just what is going to fit on this next model. Um, now, this one was the easiest. I really couldn't work out how to do anything significant with this model. So I just cut the spikes off the shoulder pad, trimmed them down, and then opted to put a different head on the model. And I think that gives enough of a difference with the models that you know you've done something to it. I took some of the spikes that we just cut off that last model there, put some of the Milliput and Green stuff mix into the back of that model that we've put the Barnick arm and the weapon on. And again, just a nice spike coming out of his back, messed around making the Milliput and Green stuff look a bit more like, you know, mutated flesh, bang some stuff in there. Now it's an arm swap. So the arm that kind of is meant to wrap around a previous model, just chopped the tentacle off and then thought, right, that will go very nicely onto the uh, one that we took the bionic arm from. And that means then both the left and right arm of this pox walker are kind of mutated. And it fits quite nicely because he's got a lot of kind of the um, tentacles and stuff coming from his back. So it fits in actually quite nicely with the theme of the model. Now, I'm not going to go through how I painted it, particularly because I've done a painting pox walkers in three different ways video on the channel before. I'll try and remember to link that down below. But I'm doing a mix of standard and contrast paints. So I went through and did kind of the standard paints first, whether they're the metallics on, on the uh, end of the weapons you can see here, doing the bug arm in a nice sort of jean stealer colour. But all the colours were done to match my uh, rest of my Death Guard army. Again, did a mix of standard colours, and then I went into some uh, contrast paints. And I've kind of got used to that a little bit more now on the channel. Whilst I try and make the, the models match all the way across my army, obviously, I have been experimenting with different ways of getting a very similar effect. And Poxwalk or something like this are a great one to experiment with different paints, different styles, different things you might want to do, because it doesn't matter if they're that little bit different to the rest of the army, because they're meant to be this kind of shambling horde. So yeah, did that as I uh, went through. The basing was where I didn't do anything different though, because obviously that's a real key way of tying all the models together, and I wanted them to obviously be very, very innocent in the army. Now with the washes, point to note, I use a lot of Vallejo kind of dirty sepia washes, and I also use the Games Workshop Seraphim sepia, and on the torsos of these models, I use the Seraphim sepia because that tones the model down a bit, but it what it doesn't do is it doesn't go on top and sort of overrun the contrast paint. 
The base I did with the sort of darker Vallejo wash, again, if you've watched the channel before. So if you watched the Typhus video from a week or so ago, that's what I did. Then once all the wash was dry, a few little highlight layers, and here we see the finished models. So original model on the right, um, converted model on the left. So these first couple are fairly simple, just head swaps, nothing too drastic. Then here a head and a hand swap, but again, just a little bit of variety. If I wanted massive variety, I could have painted the cloth on them different, but I didn't go that far. So here we have an arm swap and a head swap. Fairly nice and simple, but fairly close. Camera's not pulling the colours out very well. I think I need to do an upgrade or something different. Here we get a bit more serious. So this is an arm swap and a head swap. Getting a bit more serious here. So two very different arms on the left model. And then all that green stuff work that we had to do to make the skin match together in the holes that was left. So I think that worked quite well. Um, added some tentacles on the right hand arm here and a different head. So again, not radical, but I think a bit more kind of use of uh, green stuff there. Now we're getting a bit more, um, it doesn't look obviously different, but a tentacle arm on the left and again some push jewels and stuff moulded into the shoulders, um, but I think quite nicely different. And again, if you were to paint them different, it would stand out more. These are quite a radical difference. So uh, same set of legs, but a totally different top torso, some nice tentacles in the arms and some push jewelry bits. So we're getting a bit more effort and work put in. But hopefully as you've seen, none of this was actually too challenging. And here's probably my favorite conversion. They actually look a bit more like twin brothers that have uh, mutated in a slightly different way, but a lot of green stuff work and stuff in there. So yeah, there we go. That's my converted Poxwalker unit. Hope you liked that. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.